Hey everyone. Okay, so we are back today to talk about parallelograms. Okay, now you guys have learned some stuff about parallelograms before. So I'm gonna go over the characteristics. We're gonna review what you guys already have been taught. Okay, and then we're gonna look at how we apply the properties of parallelograms to solve problems. So let's do a quick review of what you guys learned in previous grades about parallelograms. So first and foremost, guys, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral that has both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, okay? And if you see right here, we've got these two sides are parallel and these two sides are parallel. So in order to, for it to be a parallelogram, both opposite sides have to be parallel. Now, something else about parallelograms that has to be true is that both pairs of opposite sides have to be congruent. And if you guys notice right here, our opposite sides are also congruent. Okay, so this is something that you guys probably will remember from previous grades. So let's look at this next one, okay? Parallelograms have opposite angles that are congruent. So I'm gonna highlight right here, we have angle M and angle K are opposite of each other and they are marked as congruent. And angle N and angle L are also opposite of each other and they are congruent. Okay, so that's another characteristic. Now, guys, let's go back and review. This is from unit three. So let's go back and review. Do you guys remember that when we have parallel lines, okay, we are going to have consecutive interior angles that are supplementary, okay? So supplementary means that they add up to 180 degrees, okay? And consecutive interior. Guys, that means that they're inside the parallel lines and they're on the same side of the transversal. Now, what I just highlighted in blue, guys, that's our parallelogram. So if I extend the parallel lines, okay, extend them past the actual shape, you guys can see that X and Y are actually consecutive interior angles. Oh, then that means that, that means consecutive angles, okay, have to be supplementary. And that's what this talks about right here. Okay, this may be something new, okay, to you guys. So right here, I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on this. It says, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. So remember, consecutive means one right after the other. So that means that angle P and angle Q, guys, these are consecutive angles and they're in a parallelogram, so they have to add up to 180 degrees. Okay, now remember just a second ago, we talked about opposite angles in a parallelogram have to be what? Okay, so if you remember, we said that opposite angles have to be congruent. So that means that angle P and angle R have to be congruent. Well, wait a minute. That also means that Q and R are consecutive angles, so they have to be supplementary. So those two angles are supplementary. Oh, well, wait a minute. Q and S are opposite angles, so they have to be congruent. Well, P and S are consecutive angles, and so are S and R. They're also consecutive angles. So if you guys notice, we actually have four sets of consecutive angles that are supplementary, okay? So you might wanna jot this down on your notes so that you have it for reference, okay? And, okay, I'm gonna show you guys here in just a second how to put this on your flip chart as well. Okay, now something else that is new that you guys may or may not have heard about before, <clears throat> and that is that parallelograms have diagonals that bisect each other. Now, just to review, a diagonal goes from one vertice to a non-consecutive vertice. So it can't be right next to it. So if we look down here at W, U, okay, that diagonal, okay, gets bisected by the other diagonal. So that means that these two sides right here are congruent to each other, okay? That's what this says right here, okay? 
And then the same is true for the other diagonal. So I start at T, I can go down here to V. That diagonal also gets bisected by the other diagonal. So that means that those parts are congruent, which is what this says right over here. Now, diagonals bisecting each other. So they're crossing each other. Guys, it doesn't matter what angle they cross each other at. They will always bisect the length, not the angles. Bisect the length of the diagonal. Okay, so next what I want you guys to do, make sure that you have your flip chart or that you have your notes here to reference because as we start working through some problems together, and let me get up here big to where you guys can see me, when we start working through some problems together, the first thing you have to do is identify what parts of the parallelogram are we dealing with and then label it according to whatever is marked on your flip chart or what is marked on your notes. So let's go down and ladies and gents, we are going to do, you know what guys, let's go down and take a look at number five first. Let's go down and take a look at number five. I'll see you in just a second. All right, so guys, down here at number five, the instructions say to find the value of each variable in the parallelogram. So I'm gonna zoom in here just on number five. Now, when we're finding the value of X and Y, the very first thing we wanna do is find out which part of the parallelogram are we dealing with, okay? So for the value of X, and I'm gonna write this right here. For the value of x, guys, we are using opposite angles, okay? Opposite angles. <clears throat> so look back at your notes, look at your flip chart, and tell me what do you guys know must be true about opposite angles in a parallelogram? Okay, so hopefully you said, Ms. Smith, opposite angles have to be congruent. Right, so opposite angles are congruent. So if our opposite angles are congruent, I want you guys to set up and solve for X. Okay, and then tell me, what do you get for the value of X? All right, ladies and gents, how'd you do? Did you remember that if parts are congruent, you set them equal to each other, right? Okay, so look at my work, compare it to your work, make sure you're on track. If not, guys, circle it. If you need to, ask your teacher questions, okay? Now, the next thing we wanna look at is the value of Y. So we have to ask ourselves, well, let's see. Y is up here on this side and down here on this side, okay? So if Y is on opposite sides, Guys, go look at your notes, go look at your flip chart, and tell me, what do you guys know must be true about opposite sides in a parallelogram? All right, let's see if you were on track. Opposite sides of a parallelogram, okay? Have to be congruent. Opposite sides of a parallelogram have to be congruent. So that means that this side is congruent to this side. Okay, well now that we know that those two sides are congruent, you guys set up and I want you guys to solve for Y and tell me, what do you get for Y? Okay, so how'd you do? Okay, so do you guys notice that we, we're kind of setting a pattern here, right? If parts are congruent, you set them equal to each other, right? Okay, so you should have gotten that Y is eight. So, guys, what we just did right there is we applied the properties of opposite angles and opposite sides of a parallelogram to solve some problems. Now, let's go take a look at a different okay, property of a different part of the parallelogram. And let's go down and let's look at number 15. Let's go look at number 15. Alrighty, y'all. Now, in numbers 15 and 16, we're going to use the properties of angles in a parallelogram to find the value of the variables. So we're going to zoom in here on number 15. Okay, there we go. And on number 15, guys, it says to solve for x first. Well, do we have to solve for x first? No, we can also solve for y. But guys, let's take a look at what we see right here. Y is down here in this angle. 
Okay, so if I knew the opposite angle, then I could say that opposite angles are congruent, but I don't know the opposite angle. What it gives me to start out with is the consecutive angle. Okay, you guys go look back at your notes that we just took, and I want you to ask yourself, and I want you to try to find this on the notes we just took, what must be true about consecutive angles in a parallelogram? All right, so hopefully you looked in your notes that you took and that's written down for you. Sup supplementary angles, they have to be supplementary angles. Consecutive angles have to be supplementary. So that means that they add up to 180. Okay, guys, I just said how to set it up, right? So I want you guys to set up for Y and I want you to solve it and tell me, what do you get for Y? Okay, so how'd you guys do on this one? Okay, remember, if you have supplementary angles, then they add up to 180. Okay, so check your work against mine, see how you did. Okay, so Y equals 13. Now, guys, that's going to help us maybe to help to solve X. Or what do you guys notice about we've got that X is up here. And what do you guys notice is opposite of that? Oh, so remember, we said that opposite angles in a parallelogram have to be congruent, don't they? Okay, so I can say 4x minus 7 equals 109. I can go through and solve. Drum roll, please. All right. Yo, come on, tell me you guys like my little drum roll, little gifts. I know they're so cute, aren't they? All right, so x is going to equal 29. Okay, and this is where you guys say, yes, Miss Smith, your little drum roll doggy is so cute, right? Okay. So, guys, different property there for Y. Remember, we're using consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, so let's go practice another property of parallelograms. Are you guys beginning to see how many properties there are? So, your flip charts are going to be highly, highly caveted during this particular unit. All right, so let's see. Let's go down. Hey, guys, let's go do number 18 together. I'll meet you at number 18. Okay, so for number 17 and 18, it says use the properties of diagonals in a parallelogram to find the value of the variables. So I'm going to zoom in here on number 18. We're going to look at just the picture for a second. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to either go look at your notes or go look at your flip charts. And I want you guys to label on your picture, on your assignment, I want you guys to label what parts are going to be congruent to each other? All right, go do that now. Okay, let's see how you guys did. So diagonals bisect each other. So that means that maybe I have one mark here and one congruency mark here, and maybe I put two here and two here. That's a possibility. Hey, could you have also put one congruency mark here and one here? and two here and two here, absolutely, okay? So diagonals bisect each other, okay? So we are using the properties of diagonals and they bisect each other, okay? If they bisect each other, that means they have to go right through the middle. Ah, we're gonna use that in just a second, okay? Okay, so I want you guys to use what you know about the properties of congruent figures or congruent parts, I mean. And I want you guys to solve for both X and Y. And then tell me, what did you get for X? And then what did you get for Y? Go give it a try. Okay, how'd you do for X? Okay, let's check and see. And then how'd you do for Y? Okay, so guys, if you did not get that X equals one or Y equals four, look at my work, compare it to your work. If you still have questions about it, make sure that you reach out to your teacher, okay? So when diagonals bisect each other, it means that they are exactly cut in half, which means that each side is congruent. And when they're congruent to each other, we set them equal to each other. 
So again, we've been practicing this all year long, okay? All right, now, we're gonna do one more problem together and we're gonna, uh, it's going to apply to what I just said again, diagonals bisect each other, so diagonals have to go through the midpoint. If they go right smack dab through the middle, they have to go through the midpoint of the segment. So, guys, let's go take a look at number 21 together. Let's go look at number 21. Okay, so on number 21 right here, notice it's giving us coordinates. Okay, so it says find the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonals of the parallelogram with the given vertices. So let's just, I want you guys to, if you, even if you need to write this down somewhere, okay? So if the diagonals bisect each other, right? If they, if they bisect each other, they go through the midpoint, okay? So they go through the midpoint, okay? And you can abbreviate, MP is midpoint, okay? Okay, so let's think about how do we figure out which of these lines are diagonals? So, because you see right here, it says parallelogram W, X, Y, Z. So if I were to draw a parallelogram, it would look something like this. I'm gonna start in any vertex, and I'm gonna say this is W, and then what you gotta do is go around the outside of the parallelogram to name it. So W, X, Y, and Z. Do you guys see how I went around the outside to name it correctly? Okay, now I can figure out which are the diagonals. So remember the diagonals go to nine consecutive vertices. So WY is one of my diagonals and XZ is the other diagonal. Okay, so if the diagonals bisect each other, that means that they have to intersect at the midpoint. Okay, so we need to find the midpoint of WY and the midpoint of XZ. Okay, so guys, you've done midpoint before. I want you to go, and if you can't remember the formula for midpoint, go look on your formula chart. I want you guys to go first, find the midpoint for WY and tell me what do you get from the midpoint? Okay, so hopefully you guys got that the midpoint is at negative one, three halves. So now, in order to confirm that that definitely is where those diagonals intersect on the graph, guys, we also need to find the midpoint of XZ. So go find the midpoint of XZ, work it out, and make sure, do you get the same value? All right, go give it a shot. What did you get for the midpoint of XZ? Okay, look, hopefully you guys worked it out and you got that the midpoint of XZ was also at negative one, three halves. So guys, that is the intersection point. That's where they cross each other on the graph, okay, through the midpoint. All right, so look at your work, look at my work, compare it. And guys, that is all of the examples that we're gonna do today but I want you guys to make sure you have your unit seven flip chart assembled so that you can use it and reference back to it because we are gonna be learning tons of properties in unit seven and you're gonna wanna have that flip chart. Okay, as usual, guys, it's time for me to say adios.